Hey everyone, this is a quick walkthrough of the new template that I've just released, which is called Lit. I have had an absolute ton of requests to make a digital version uh, of this uh, kind of lighting style here uh, to use for high volume workflow and things. So this is my take on that. So I just thought we'd take a quick look to see uh, maybe how to get the best use out of this and some of the, the layers in here and things. So when this loads up, it's going to look kind of right like this. If you're used to my designs, you're going to be very familiar with most of this. Um, but if we take a look in here, let's just start at the bottom. So if we go to the bottom here, we just have our background, and then we have some some preset arrangements here, basically, of, the, of these lighting styles. So here's number one. Uh, here's number two. Again, these are just kind of preset here for some various looks. Now, the good thing about these... Uh, is that this is fully customizable. So for instance, if we bring up number one again here, we can expand this and you're going to see that each of these blocks in here are independent. And not only are each of the blocks independent, but if you expand the blocks, each of the lights and kind of the glows and things there are independent as well. So you're going to be able to really create custom layouts with these as well. So if there's another layout that you like or that you want to experiment, you can basically just grab a block here, grab your move tool, and you can move things around and play and experiment. So you can really create your own look out of these. Um, you're going to take notice. Let me point out inside of the blocks here. Uh, again, there's various layers for each light. And so kind of the thing that I really wanted to uh, recreate on this is that it, there's a bit of variety in the lights as these things flare so you're going to see some different layers for instance if we take you know like light eight right here and we turn these three layers off so that's this light right here on this block so the light is basically just you know a circle with a bit of glow to it then what we do is add an extra little flare of blur here and then an extra little glow so once you build this up it's going to create this effect, but you'll notice some of these layers are, are already turned off because we want to make this look kind of random. So if you go creating your own layouts, you know, just keep in mind, you know, randomize some of those glows and things so that it gives it more of a realistic type of effect. But again, all of that's in the layers here. You can create your own looks. I, I can't wait to see what you guys do with that. So let's go on up here. So above the arrangements, here we have some, some background smoke options. Uh, so let's just turn our foreground smoke off for a minute. And you can see there's various options in here. So you can turn these off and on. These are going to work with the different arrangements that are in there. So there's some that are stronger than others. Uh, there's a couple of different options. We're going to talk about those just in a second here. But like you can mix and match these. So if you wanted a little bit more of a boost, you could turn some of these on and off together and create some different looks there as well. So different combinations. One of the other things that's in the top here, you're going to see these extra smoky boosts. So if you wanted to like push an extra boost somewhere uh, like you had a big puff of smoke hitting those lights and kind of blowing out so there's the look of that and then you're also going to see there's these ground smoke options so what those are referring to you're going to see right up here we're going to we're going to skip this layer for just a second here and look at this one so our ground options if we turn those on you're going to see you have um, some some grounds in here that you can play around with now, some of these preset arrangements are going to fade into the ground. Again, if you wanted to use this arrangement here, you could simply just come pick this arrangement, Control or Command T, and I'm just going to hold Shift and Alt and just drag this in. And you can make this smaller and just arrow key up or drag up, however you want to do this. And so you could still use those ground types. You just have to make those lights a little bit smaller. So then if you wanted to put your subject's feet in there and ground them and things, you can. But in conjunction with that, there's a couple different smoke options back here that have this ground layer built into the back. So it looks like that, that smoke or that fog is kind of running across the back of the ground here. Here's one that runs just with the ground, so you could mix and match that with some of these background smoke options. So again, there's some variety in here to play with. Under the ground options, you're going to see we have a grass option. Here's one. This is kind of like a wrestling mat type of texture. It also has kind of a concrete feel, so it could work either way. Here we have like a court. This is just some diamond plate and some dirt. So again, getting some variety out of those ground textures there hopefully will give you a lot of use out of this thing. So let's reset a couple of these. Uh, let's just leave it right there. Another layer here, this is your light color cast. Um, so I really like that, that desaturated type of blue look, but you could just come in here. It's just a color picker. 
and you could pick if you wanted to match this to a school color you could go a little bit red or you could go very red so you could play with all these different colors as well to create some different glows on those lights we'll get to our subject group in just a minute there's a few foreground smoke options in here so if we expand this folder you're going to see one here 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 and here so these are going to work really well for like your three-quarter links or your half links things like that again to create some different variety there's a cool color cast you'll see how that works just in a minute to continue to desaturate things some haze things like that and then there's some let's jump up to our color grade layers here the color grade i did a little different on this one so if you expand this you're actually going to see there's a couple groups in another layer here so you have like a cool group if we turn that off here's a warming group and then you have this cool haze which affects our shadows to kind of haze things out just a little bit but i, I changed this up a little bit so that there's I really like the the cool look of this design, those those bluer temperatures, but I also like the warm ones too. And depending on your image, your subject, things like that, you might prefer one over the other. You could also expand these and mix and match. Um, you know the way that these things blend together to create some different looks, and you can also play with opacities on on all of these layers. So again, hopefully you'll find there's a lot of control in here to customize uh, the look of all this. On the top here, if you're using this for TNI, you're going to see there's there's some you know some basic text information here. So if you want to throw a team in, you want to throw some text in. That's all customizable text. Uh, you know, just double click and edit. You can change the font if you want to change that out. Again, all of that is completely flexible. So let's jump down to our subject layer here. Let's turn a subject on in here, and I want to just cover a couple points of how I think you're going to get the best use out of this one. Now, if you are if you know you're going to use this design uh, going into your photo shoot, you really want to go with that three light setup with those two bright rim lights and really overexpose those rim lights. That's what's really going to help sell this whole look. But even if you, let's say you've done a photo shoot and you've used three lights, but maybe those kicker lights weren't as bright as you would like them to really sell this look. I want to show you how we can fake this a little bit in Photoshop to really sell this idea. So what I'm going to do is expand our subject group. Let's go to our subject layer right here. I'm going to double click just out here on the blank part of the layer to bring up our layer style panel. Now from within layer style, what we want to do is we want to turn on this option here called inner glow. And you may have seen videos where I've covered this before, so we're just going to talk about it again and how I approach it with this design in particular. So with Interglow turned on, I'm going to make sure the blend mode to start with is set to Color Dodge. I'm just going to make sure that my foreground color is white, opacity is at 100, and then we're going to look at a couple sliders here. The first one is the size, the second one is the range. So we're going to pick a mix of this. And, and what's happening here is the size is kind of how wide that glow in, comes in from the outside of your extracted image. The range is how far that transition happens. So in other words, if we turn that range, you can see how it affects that gradient. So I'm really looking at the arms and things here. I want to build that, that highlight up to where it feels kind of natural and wrapping it. So I like the look of that right there. That looks really good. Turn the preview on and off. You can really see what that's starting to do. Let's click OK. Now this is happening in some places we don't want it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to our effect right here, Enter Glow, right click, and select create layer. Now once we've created a layer I can hold alter option. I'm going to click the mask and now we can hide this effect. So if I come over here and grab the brush tool let's bring flow down maybe 35 percent looks good and now I'm just going to paint this in where I want these highlights to show up. So definitely here I think we definitely want to get some in the hair and we're just trying to again fake this effect that there's some really bright lights happening behind the subject and spilling over onto them here. Maybe grab a sides just a little bit. I'm going to leave the underside of the arms a little dark for now. And now what we can do is we're going to ramp this up one more time. I'm going to go right back into the subject layer, double click out here in the layer, right back into our layer style. I'm going to turn inner glow on again, but this time I'm going to choose screen blending mode. So screen just interacts a little bit differently with the subject. Again, you could play with the size and the range and kind of get something that you want. I want something that looks fairly natural, so let's bring the range back up a little bit. All right, we're going to click OK again. And now the same thing, we're going to right click on this, create a layer out of it. The one thing we want to be sure to do now, though, is drag this effect above that first one. 
and that's going to give you what you were seeing in your preview. We're going to hide this with a mask again. Alter Option click here. Right back with the white brush and then I'm going to selectively choose where I want to kind of emphasize this a little bit more. Maybe now I can get a little bit under the arms since that looks a little more natural. A little bit of the sides. Now if we look at these on and off you're going to see how that glow really starts to bring this effect together with your subject into the background. Makes such a huge difference. And if you've overpainted, like I, I see down here, we've overpainted a little bit, and I can just go back to the mask, switch over to a black brush, and we could paint that away anywhere. We've got too much. All right, that's looking good. So now, if we turn some foreground smoke on here, we can look at our different options. I really like the look of that one right there. So there's some different options. I'm going to go with this one. I really like the way that that looks. And again, we can play with the color grade. So there's a cool version of that. There's a warm version of that. I really like both of those. Let's stick with the cool version for now. Um, down here on this cool color cast, you can see that's basically just desaturating our subject's skin tones to kind of push that cool effect. So I really like the look of that. Of course, you could come in and you could tweak this to be anything that you wanted. If you wanted to pick different colors and, and you know impose different colors onto your subject, Please feel free to play around with that. There's that haziness again. It just adds a little bit of desaturation and a little bit of blue to your shadows to give that hazy look. Now, one thing that you'll see on my samples is I did go just a step further, and I used my clean grit action to add some grit to this. Now, let's just walk through that. I'm going to turn these top layers off here. All right. And I'm just going to go to the top of this haze layer right here. And now with this action, you do have to have Nick filters installed. Uh, but if you do and you grab this action or you already have it, uh, then what we're going to do is come up here. We're just going to run and apply this action here. And if you want more information about that, you can find that on the website. Just search for Clean Grit. We're going to let this run. It takes just a second here for the Nick filter to run. And that's going to give us that effect, which I really love with this whole look. That little bit of extra grittiness in there looks really cool. So now we can turn our color grade back on. And now you can really see the difference of what happens with that grittiness applied. It gives you that smoky texture in the background and really just carves out a lot of the little details that I really, really love there. Okay, one little thing that I do want to point out in here as well is there's one other group in here which is called Extra Flares. And I want to show you how to get the best effect out of these. If we turn this group on and expand it, you're going to see there's just three flare layers in here. And what we want to do is we want to be very careful about how we place these. So I'm just going to turn them all off and turn them on one at a time. I'm going to grab the Move tool. And really what these are designed to do, the way I like to use these is anywhere that you have a light run into the subject and kind of overlap, I like to use that to make it look like that light's flaring out over the edge of their body. So if we just kind of center it up so you get some of that flare over the subject, some over the light, we're going to turn on the second one, do the same thing. You could actually come up into the hair. You just want to be careful, you know, not to have it like directly over your subject to where it makes a weird hot spot. It really just needs to overlap and kind of flare over them a little bit like this. Here's one down here so we could find another area, maybe where there's several lights right there. And now you can see if we turn those on and off, Again, it just helps create that random effect that there's light flaring into the lens and creating that more realistic uh, overall effect to the image. All right, so that's how we would handle that kind of look. One other thing that I do want to show right here towards the end is if you wanted to shoot wide angle, if you like to shoot low and you want to fake that perspective, it's really easy to do with this one. All you could do, and you could use any of these arrangements where you can see all the lights here. Um, it's really going to be the same effect. Let's just grab number two right here. I'm just going to Command or Control T and grab this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select Perspective. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag the bottom corners out a little bit. It doesn't have to be too much. We could just go something right like that. And in fact, we could even raise this up a bit now. And if something gets misaligned like this, all you need to do, and if, you're, if you don't want to fudge it around, 
just with your group uh, selected, hit Command or Control A, select the whole canvas. And then with your Move tool selected, just come up here and click Center, and that's going to center it back up for you. But now what that does is it gives you this idea that you're shooting low up into your subject and those lights kind of skew up and away to really sell that wide angle effect, which I really, really love. So if you're photographing your subjects low and wide angle on purpose, you can make that quick little t tweak to any of these arrangements or your own arrangements to give it that wide angle effect really, really easily. All right, I hope you get a ton of use of the, out of this template. Um, I hope it's versatile enough for you to use it for all of your sports. And I cannot wait to see what you guys start creating with this.